Hello, welcome to today's session on market design, using market strategies to get system services. I'm Matteo Troncia, a researcher at Comillas Pontifical University, and in this video, I will talk about how OneNet is helping to design flexibility markets that coordinate the supply of demand of system services, and how they can be integrated into the existing electricity market landscape. One of the OneNet project of objective is the definition of a common market design for Europe. To reach this goal, the OneNet project acts on four different dimensions. The definition of harmonized system services to satisfy the different operational needs of the system operators. The definition of harmonized products related to those system services. The design of harmonized market models that allow the effective trade of the harmonized products among the market participants. And the design and implementation of interoperable platforms that allow the marketplaces to operate. In this session, we will mainly focus on the design of harmonized market models. An increased harmonization among market models is beneficial to reduce the existing market fragmentation, to facilitate customers' participation, and simplify decision-making for investors. Before starting, let's provide some key definitions that have been fundamental for developing the OneNet activities. First of all, system services. Since the services are defined to answer to the question, what are the services required to ensure the safe operation of the grid? A system service is defined as the action generally undertaken by the system operator needed to mitigate technical scarcities that would otherwise undermine the network operation. In the context of OneNet, three main categories of system services have been defined. Frequency ancillary services used by TSO's transmission system operators for active power balancing and non-frequency ancillary services that are used by transmission or distribution system operators for steady state voltage control, fast reactive current injection, inertial black star capability and its landed operation. Moreover, congestion management, congestion management service is used by transmission or distribution system operators to avoid or solve grid congestion that may saturate the power transfer capacity of the network. The second key definition concerns the products for system services. A product is defined as the, as the tradable unit that the system operators acquire for the system service from the system service providers and that entail the, op the option to deliver a system services in case of activation. And the activation can be automatic. The technical requirements of the scarcity determines the attributes of the product. The product is exchanged between two main actors, the service provider and the, ser and the system operators. To generalize, we, we may consider two categories of products, the activation products and the availability products. The activation products refer to the services that are activated in response to certain conditions in the power system, while the, avail the availability products refer to the service of commodity that ensure the availability of, activate, of activating the services when needed. Markets for system services represent a subtype of electricity markets. Among system service markets, local markets for system services refers to the exchange of services and products characterized by a specific geographical location. And this is the case, for example, for congestion management and voltage control products that are acquired by TSOs and DSOs, but specifically, Local markets for system services concern the products that are um, required by the distribution system operators for uh, non-frequency ancillary services and congestion management. Let's now discuss the motivation of designing harmonized markets that coordinate uh, local flexibility markets and integrate them into the existing electricity markets. Why do we need efficient and integrated local markets? We need, that, we need that because local markets are part of the bulk power system. So we need the services are exchanged bidirectionally between local markets and the power system to unlock the potential of local resources and maximize the social welfare of the, of, of the entire society, not only the welfare of local participants. To design harmonized market models, it's necessary to understand the elementary interaction that may exist among the market participants when procuring the services. 
system service procurement entails essentially uh, uh, three actors, the TSO, the transmission system operator, the DSO, the distribution system operators, and the service providers. This interaction uh, can be based on two main type of coordination, the market-based coordination in which the actors interact between uh, themselves by means of a market architecture in, in which they exchange the, the products related to the system services and the technical-based coordination that entails the technical arch architecture for information exchange and control actions uh, that facilitate the exchange of products and the activation of system services. Based on the analysis of the market-based coordination that, and that uh, defines the interactions among the actors, in the OneNet project, we, we have uh, proposed and developed an extensive theoretical framework that can support uh, markets for system service analysis and designs. The theoretical market framework is formed by several pillars and dimensions. These pillars are the following. Entire market architecture, sub-market coordination, market optimization, market operation, and network representation. The first two pillars set up the entire market structure and define the coordination type, while the last three pillars describe the market clearing dimension. Some of these features apply to the entire market architecture and define how the markets coordinate and integrate with, within themselves. The theoretical market framework is a powerful market design tool since going through each pillar and selecting the desired attribute for each future, the system service markets are designed while considering the content requirements and also by considering the integration into the existing market architecture. Another concept related to the theoretical market framework is how to formalize the harmonization. In the OneNet project, we have been proposing solutions for market coordination through harmonization. And different markets can cooperate by using efficiently the same pool of resources if they are harmonized. The conditions uh, that characterize harmonized markets are product compatibility that requires product harmonization and market design compatibility that requires market harmonization. If, do, the, if those two conditions are satisfied, bit forwarding can be used as a mean for coordination. It's the law to allocate resources between different markets, creating value for our participants. So we consider in OneNet as bit forwarding has a mean for coordination between different markets. And in this schema, you can see how bit forwarding can be realized. You can see that uh, the bids that are not cleared in market A can be forwarded to a second market, market B, to participate in the market clearing of this second market. Eventually, uh, in order to allow uh, the bids to participate in market B, we may need some harmonizing process that allow the forwarded B to, uh, to ensure their compatibility and to comply with the conditions that uh, are established for the receiving market. Now, let's move on to the developments of the OneNet demonstrator. In this picture, you can see the OneNet market architecture of the Northern demonstrator. You can see uh, that uh, thanks to the theoretical market framework, we can have a graphical representation of the market architecture that defines the system service procurement, uh, in this case, for the Northern demonstrator. The horizontal axis represents the temporal dimension, while on the vertical axis, you can have the buyer dimension. So it represents among the system operators who is the one participating in uh, buying the system services and the related products from service providers. The OneNet, the OneNet Northern Demonstrator is characterized by two layers, the TSO-DSO layer. So both, both uh, system operators can buy uh, from the same service providers while on the top we have the TSO layer in which only the TSO is the one buying the system services from the service providers. Each block in this, in this picture represents a specific uh, market that, um, in which um, a specific type of tradable unit, so a, a product, is exchanged. We, have, we range from long-term markets for availability to near real-time markets for uh, activation. And um, another, another important um, aspect that can be observed in this uh, slide is the fact that the markets are coordinated and integrated. Uh, in fact, you have with yellow arrows 
um, a participation forwarding due to availability commitments. It means that we have that the service provided clear in, clear in, in, in one market are committed to participate in the subsequent activation market since uh, they are um, they have to participate in this second market to to um, to provide their activation products related to uh, to the availability product that has been changed in the previous market another type of coordination is bit forwarding so we have that from our market we have the market clearing and then the the bids that have been not cleared in this market are made available in a second market to be cleared and uh, uh, this type of bid forwarding can be um, temporal so that uh, bid forwarding is between two markets that uh, uh, follow a temporal dimension but also can be vertical so that we can have that bids from a local market can be uh, cleared then in a, in a second in a second market that is a central market that uh, um, escalates from uh, from one layer to another In this second picture, you can see the market architecture for the Polish demonstrator. Also in this case, you can have that the markets range from long term to short term in the temporal dimension. But in this case, you can also see that we have two separate layers, the DSO layer and the TSO layer. So in this case, we have a market, a market architecture that is based on a de decentralized model and the, um, the bids that are exchanged in the local market for activation are then, if not cleared, aggregated and forwarded to the central markets for the integrated balancing and congestion management market of the TSO. All, all, all the demonstrators uh, of the OneNet project have been analyzed thanks to the theoretical market framework and using the concept of before forwarding. And thanks to this analysis, we have identified several challenges. I will only mention some of them. So. One of the market design challenge relates to integration. And uh, in particular, um, the, the challenge that has been identified by the, by the, um, by the one demonstrator is, is how to en en enhance the TSO-DSO cooperation at national level. And the complexity of this uh, task um, is how to define an efficient multi-level TSO-DSO structure. Some demonstrators have been proposed a solution that prioritizes local markets with flexibility allocation from local to national markets. So as we have seen in the Polish market architecture, we have a decentralized optimi optimization that ensures that local constraints are accounted before scaling to a national perspective. Uh, Another challenge that also relates to the aspects of integration uh, uh, concerns the integration of local and national markets into one cross-border ar architecture involving multiple D TSOs and DSOs. The complexity is how to manage the interaction across the borders. Some demonstrators have adopted a common TSO-DSO market architecture, as we have seen for the, um, for the representation of the Northern demonstrator. So we have that the TSO and DSOs are integrated as buyer in a single coordination platform that relies a central market optimization. So we can see that if to solve the a same challenge, the one at the, the one at the project have provided two different kinds of solutions that both performed well. A second challenge that um, arises from uh, the definition of integrated um, and coordinated market for system services is how to represent the network and how ensure that uh, we don't face uh, electricity operational disruptions. Because with increasing distributed energy resources participation in the market, avoiding electricity operational di disruptions becomes more complex. Uh, the one also in this case, the one that demonstrators have proposed different solutions. For example, we have bid filtering and aggregation at DSO level with grid constraint check before forwarding to the TSO market, or a flexibility register with pre-qualification to ensure that grid constraints compliance, uh, the grid constraints um, um, requirements are met, and then we have a coherent bid selection amongst the markets to avoid uh, double clearing. Okay, let's move to conclusions. In this session, I presented some insights on the OneNet contribution to market design and they gained expertise in deploying coordinated integrated markets for system services. 
Integrating local markets with, the, with upstream markets unlocks the potential of the available resources. The key actions identified to address the market integration challenges are the definition of harmonized procedures for integrated markets to enable the coordination between them and maximize the potential of allocating the available resources. Enable be forwarding between local and up upstream markets allow to enhance the value stacking and increase market participation. Another action is related to the reduction of entry barriers to end customers by addressing a systematic design of the market dimensions, considering the requirements of all stakeholders. Then, the deployment of interoperable, plat interoper interoperable platforms to allow the different actors to interact, the different markets to operate, and, and to enable economies of scales that simplify decision-making for investors. Okay, that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I, I'd like to give a shout out to my colleagues who contributed to the work that I shared today. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach me out via email.